So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview, sponsored by 1-800-DialDJs.com and recorded live on blogtalkradio.com from the new media and American League Baseball capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. John Hawks is best known for his role as Saul Starr, the co-owner of the hardware store and best friend of the sheriff on the beloved cocksucker HBO series, Deadwood. Hey, I don't write these intros, folks. They just sort of write themselves. But like most everybody who had a star turn on that amazing but short-lived drama, Hawks has been busy ever since, including roles in the movies American Gangster and Miami Vice. And he's currently starring on a new HBO series, Eastbound and Down. Hawks also keeps busy writing and performing music with his band, King Straggler, which is played at the Sundance Film Festival and South by Southwest. Now, I'll spin, I'll spin one of the band's tracks, Good Man, a little later in the show. Now, this week, he's taking on his most dangerous assignment yet, that is as celebrity host of Acme Saturday Night on July 11th at the Acme Comedy Theater in Los Angeles. John, welcome to Mr. Media. Well, thank you, sir. How are you? I'm I'm uh, I'm good. I'm delighted to have you here. Big uh, big fan. Oh, thank you, thank you. Did, did I just say that out loud? I didn't mean to. <laughs> Is that right? Are you are you? Are you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't blow smoke, Bob. <laughs> no, I really try not to do that actually. But uh, you know, couldn't I, help yourself for a moment there. That's all right. Yeah, I'll call, yeah. you to, call you in a good mood. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> big 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 Deadwood fan for sure. And uh, oh, great. You know. It, and it should not come as a surprise, but I, I want to ask you about Deadwood before we do anything else. Yes. Uh, the same thing I'm sure a million people ask you. Will we ever see the likes of it again? Will there ever be that early promised movie that has never materialized? Oh, man, I don't know that I'm the right guy to ask, but uh, I, would, I would say as a, as a, as a poker player, <laughs> you've got pretty bad odds on that one. But, uh, yeah. I, uh, you know, they tore down sets and things, but you just, I've, I've learned to really kind of never say never in, the, in, in this business and in this world, you just kind of never know. So who knows? I mean, I, I know that the, the David Milch, uh, the show's creator, had wanted to, to uh, set the films in, uh, in, in the future away. So who knows? Maybe, maybe it'll be seven, eight years and they'll round us all up again and, and that much time will have passed and, we'll, and we'll, we'll do something. I always thought it would make a great feature film, though, and that, that, uh, you know, hopefully it would have made its money back if they had done it, but uh, who knows? Yeah, that's tough. Now, I, now your role was one that uh, of many that actually grew stronger and more interesting as that series went on, and I, I kind of wondered if it was tough saying goodbye to Saul when it all ended. It was incredibly tough. That was the that was the best job I've ever had in my life. Uh, really, uh, even better than washing dishes. I mean, it was a really, it was a really, <laughs> really great job. And, and uh, yeah, I, I, I drove on that set off, you know, for three years, uh, shooting episodes, and every time uh, I pulled into the dusty uh, dusty streets, uh, you know, to, to, to go park where, park behind the set, I just, I smiled every time I drove, I drove in there. It was, uh, it was, no matter what kind of mood I was in, uh, just getting there made me happy. To be with those people and to wear those clothes and to walk those streets and to get to say that amazing uh, dialogue that uh, Mr. Milch had written, it was really, really a pleasure. I, I wish I could say something something bad about it, but I, I can't really think of anything. Uh, every person on the show, uh, every crew member uh, was, was dedicated and, and uh, just really a ball to be around. It was really something. Well, I wanted to ask you about that uh that dialogue do you, do you, and obviously you do that you miss that flowery and, and often flagrant uh, language it really gave you license to say pretty much anything it's true and that's the beauty of of, uh, of networks like hbo and showtime is that you you do get uh, the full range of your expression and uh you know, I was playing a good guy on that one, but you know it's tough playing bad guys uh, or, or any guy almost uh, on a on a network show because it seems like uh, you know there well for one thing the story's interrupted every you know ten minutes for Viagra and Ford and whatever the hell else and and uh, you know it, it, it's a and you know as a as playing a killer you're uh, on a network show uh, guest starring it's difficult because you you know you, you do films where there's some some truth in what you're doing and then uh, you're playing a bad guy on on uh, network TV and you're just trying to trying to keep people interested until, uh, you know, it's kind of filler between commercials is what you learn, uh, which is, I know there's great shows on network TV, but it's hard for me to watch them. I, I get them later on DVD and, and, uh, <laughs> and it's, 
Well, you know, and I, I interviewed uh, several members of the cast of this uh, new NBC series, uh, Southland, mm-hmm. which uh, the, the actors actually use the full-fledged curse words and, and string them out, wow. and then they're, they're kind of whited out or bleeped when they hit NBC, mm-hmm. but they're there, and you know exactly what they're said. I kind of wondered if, uh, if you had a favorite expletive-filled line from Deadwood that, st- that stays with you. Well, you know, uh, Saul didn't swear a great deal. He uh, right. he was a guy. In the end, who, he did. Well, you know, once he'd gotten shot uh, by <laughs> Johnny Burns, and then and then was on morphine, he was pretty upset with uh, with with his partner uh, Seth Bullock, and he uh, or I guess I. It seems it seems like a like a person outside of myself now, but uh, certainly uh, there were some cocksuckers thrown around. I'm not. Uh, I don't quite remember you know any of those lines exactly, but uh, but uh, I certainly blurted out a few, uh, much to my mother's chagrin. But uh, no, she doesn't. She doesn't mind language, but she, uh, you know, she's. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I, I was I, after we wrapped the scene. I thought, oh, well, it's probably, my mother probably won't love this scene that the most of any. <laughs> but, but it, was, it was fun to to, to get to, uh, to 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 go there with the other cursors, I guess, and, uh, and be part of that. Well, and and then uh, one of the interesting things that happened with your character was, of course, was the relationship that developed with Trixie, the uh, yeah. the, the whore with a heart. Um, yeah. <laughs> A, a tough heart, but but a, but a, but a, but, a, but a beautiful soft one under, underneath, uh, buried far beneath uh, layers of iron and steel. I think, basically, <laughs> yeah. No, she's a wonderful, wonderful character and a great actress, Paula Malcolmson. Just really, uh, really terrific. You know, you have those uh, scenes where you you know you're playing someone's uh, lover and. Uh, or to be in love with someone, and and with her, it was just it was really easy. It was a ball. There was uh, never any real. Um, problem in, in in anything we were asked to do. We were both kind of game to do it, and we trusted each other. And uh, you know, it never felt uh, creepy or weird. It just uh, it just uh, felt like working with a with a dear friend, which which it turned out to be. Hmm. Now, John, there's uh, there's there's someone on the phone line here. I, I I'm hoping they're calling in for you. Let's just check and see. Uh, uh, if not, if not hi, we'll hang we'll hang up on them. We'll thing? hang up on them exactly. Hi, did you have a comment or question for John Hawks? Hello, eight six two. Still me. No, oh, okay. Well, we'll just I have that effect go. on the people, Bob. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's quite unfortunate. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, they hung up now. Um, Fair enough. So, uh, it, I was thinking that it would be it would be fun to see you work with uh, Timmy Oliphant. Timmy, not Timmy, Timothy Oliphant again. That you two you had this him, kind you of Timmy. <laughs> well, you, you can probably call him Timmy. I, I'll probably just be with uh, Sir. Uh, but you guys had this unique chemistry that even, I mean, it, it obviously scripted characters. But even when the characters disagreed, there was always this kind of, and I don't know a better way to put this, but a manly friendship that seemed to hold it, hold everything together on a on a show where, where friendship really didn't matter for much in, among other characters. It's true. You know, there was, uh, there was a real bond between those guys, and that's based in, in historical fact. Uh, you know, nobody really knows what went on in, in history, uh, if, if we think about it for a minute. You know, um, we, we, we guess as to what, how things might have been. But in real life, those guys were partners for many, many years and, uh, and had uh, cattle, uh, cattle interests and... Uh, Saul owned the flour mill for a while, and um, you know it was said, by the way, that when when Saul Starr owned the flour flour mill, uh, no one ever went hungry. But also, as mayor, he got in a little trouble with uh, the government or the law through some kind of postal issue uh, fraud thing, which he was exonerated of, and then he he. Uh, had another fight with a town's uh, one of the townspeople, and uh, this, is, this is several years after after the television show took place, probably closer to the to 1900 or so, when he when he uh, shut down a, a whorehouse of a, a, of a family who he didn't like, and the town made him kind of uh, you know reconsider and, and open it up again because uh, all the others were were running fine. He didn't shut any others down, and uh, but but he seemed like a guy who had a great deal of compassion, and he also got uh, on with uh, with the with the Asian uh, the Chinese uh, folks there. He was the only one, I guess, one of two people who were invited to their their uh, ceremonies, and their their they had their own Masonic lodge. I think that he was that he was part of, and uh, huh. he got along got along with everybody, and and apparently was a real swell guy. And, and 
And back to the point of he and, and Bullock, you know, for the, they, they lived out their lives there. You know, they uh, Saul never married. Uh, I think he had lots of girlfriends, as, as we understand it. And uh, I think one or two might have been prostitutes, but that was a common thing back in the old days there. And, and, uh, and Seth Bullock uh, married and had, had lots of kids. And, uh, but, but their relationship... Uh, you know, probably had its, in truth, had its, its uh, rough moments, but for the most part, they they worked together for many years and really brought a, a sense of order to the camp, and yet I think they kind of kept a sense of humor about it, too. They didn't completely uh, clean it up. Uh, I think prostitution remained legal in the real Deadwood stuff into the, into the 70s or late 70s uh, of, uh, of 1970s, something like that. So, hmm. you know, their their legacy kind of, uh, kind of hung out for a while. Ah, the good old days. Yes, um. indeed. <laughs> <laughs> now I suspect you have not suffered uh, typecasting as the as the uh, Jewish shopkeeper. No, no, that uh, that that, uh, that was the first Jewish shopkeeper I, I had played, and I haven't played another one since. But I'm I'm open to it if it's well written. Sure, why not? <laughs> uh, we'll uh, we'll let Woody Woody Allen and Larry David know. Uh, yeah, that, that would be nice. That'd be nice. Put in a word up. for me. That would be great. I will. Now, I noticed that you uh, also had a role, before we get off this subject entirely, I, I noticed that you also had a role in my other favorite TV western, The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. With, uh, oh, gosh, Bruce you Campbell. watched that show. Terrific. Yeah, Bruce Campbell. Amazing. Well, Amazing. What, what, what did you, what did you uh, who did you play on I, I that? I can remember the character's name. You know, I, I did it. I know, that's a, I just a pat, question not, out of left field. Not to, That's all right. Not to pat myself on, on the back, but, I, but but the character was such that a lot of people who watched it didn't know that it was me at first. There wasn't a makeup deal or whatever, but I, had a very, I remember I used a very strange kind of, I think it's kind of a voice is sort of like this, and the guy had glasses <laughs> and a bowler hat, and he was the... He was—I don't remember which season it was. He was the—he basically managed a uh, gunfighter who couldn't speak. He did all the talking for him. The guy to scar across his uh, the fastest uh, the fastest uh, gun in the West, basically uh, Utah uh, Utah Johnny Montana. It used to be Utah John Cougar Montana, but he thought the Cougar was pretentious. That was one of the lines. I remember. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, it was great. He would you know basically. Uh, the, the, I, I do remember a scene where a guy uh, came up and was making trouble, and uh, I set it up so that, uh, you know, sir, you're welcome to pull your gun, put your finger on the trigger, and aim it at, uh, at Utah, uh, Johnny, and uh, go ahead and get ready to pull the trigger, and he, he will remain uh, with his hand off his weapon until such time as he chooses to defend himself. And uh, he ended up, yeah, it was just all, all well written and, and farcical and, and, and fun like that show was. It was terrific. I, I did not realize until literally minutes before we went on the air that you had been on there. Or I, one of the few series that I actually have the DVD set of is I wish Briscoe I knew what, County. What, what season? But yeah, it's, I, a, it's a funny character, and it, it, it was I, I great. great that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would have been fun. Um, yeah. So now you're you're back doing uh, comedy. You're doing uh, Eastbound and Down. It's what true. Um, what brought you back to another uh, HBO series? Well, I, I love that network uh, to begin with. As I said, uh, they they do allow you uh, a lot of creative freedom, and uh, I guess as as uh, high-minded as that sounds, uh, it's a great thing when you're when you're an actor or a writer. Uh, I'm guessing, and a director, to be able to. To, to do work without having people uh, wearing ties, peering over your shoulder and saying, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that. It was the kind of thing where if, if, it's, if it told the story well, then, then, it, then it's good, and it's in there kind of deal. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great place to work, truly. And uh, for people who um, uh, have not seen it yet, um, mm-hmm. uh, tell us a little about the concept. Danny, Br- Danny McBride... Uh, it plays Kenny Powers. You play Dustin Powers. What's, yes, what's the show about? Well, I don't know how many folks have heard of. Uh, well, I, 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 basically, it's a uh, it's about a, a, a baseball pitcher who, as a young man, and we learn all this in the first five minutes of the first episode. As a young man, has a, a meteoric rise uh, in the major leagues to superstardom uh, instantly. He comes in as a rookie in the ninth inning of a World Series uh, Game 7 and, uh, you know, strikes out the side with the bases loaded, a, a late call-up or a late, late, late uh, roster ad. And uh, he's a guy with an attitude and, uh, and uh, is, is not, uh, uh, not the most tactful or, or smart uh, person. And uh, he fairly quickly burns out in the majors, has a quick fall, and eventually you see his fastball on the radar gun, you know, going from 100 to 90 to 85 to 79. And finally he's even out of the minor <laughs> leagues. And 
tail between his legs. He has to go back to his uh, town where he grew up in in, uh, in North Carolina and uh, substitute teach gym class and live uh, with my wife and I and kids, which we don't much enjoy. But he still thinks he's the man and, and that nothing has kind of changed, and that's, that's the jumping off point. <laughs> now, I saw an episode this week for the first time, and I saw and I, 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 I saw uh, Will Ferrell was in it. Was he playing yes, a, a car dealer? He was indeed. Yes, indeed, with with a Ric Flair <laughs> wig. I think they wanted the the ex wrestler Ric Flair and couldn't get him or something, so they just uh, Will said, "I'll do it." And and uh, they had a nice wig made, a nice blonde wig made for him, and he was uh, he was a hoot and a half. He's uh, you know improvising uh, right and left. You know he's Will Ferrell. He's uh, he's uh, <laughs> just a crazy uh, man. Very, very kind. Uh, you know, quiet, normal guy. Uh, fun. Uh, you know, uh, when the camera's not rolling, but when the camera gets uh, rolls, he's. Uh, He's a madman. That's terrific. Mm. And uh, uh, Craig Robinson from uh, The Office was in a couple episodes. Indeed, yeah, terrific. Yeah, always good. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more of those. Uh, yeah. Uh, have, how many? Six. How many did you guys shoot? Six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Uh, just a half. I guess that, that's a, a half season to get started, and uh, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. So you don't you don't know yet if it's if it'll be picked up for more or do you? Well, I know it's picked up. I'm not certain about my status. Uh, it's not giving oh. away too much to say that at the very end of the the last minute of the sixth episode, uh, or the last two or three minutes, things change uh, incredibly drastically in the show. Uh, they're thinking of setting it in a in a different town and uh, and uh, maybe uh, you know starting his life over with uh, with different people around him. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Oh my. Yeah. Well, it's, it's you know <laughs> it's just how it just how it goes sometimes. But that's uh, that's showbiz, as they say. As they say. Well, I, I want to play a uh, a song from your band, uh, King okay. Straggler. Uh, oh, that'd be this lovely. Is, uh, oh, sure. And this is a uh, good man. And I wondered if, if before I play it, I want to talk talk about the band afterwards. But is there anything you want to say to kind of set this up or introduce the song? Oh, this song is uh, is about my dad, but not in the way that you think. Uh, I don't. That doesn't even make any sense. It's it's kind of about my my father and myself, and uh, I guess anyone who uh, struggles with. Uh, with uh with with trying to be a good man in uh, in 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 the, in the modern world uh the sh- the song actually uh was was uh, using the closing credits theme for a movie in which I had a small part in a Jeff Bridges movie uh called The Amateurs and uh I was very proud to uh sit in the theater and hear hear a song I'd written and and sung uh and and played uh, you know, uh as the credits rolled it was it was quite a thrill I would think that'd be pretty damn exciting um but all right, folks, uh, give a listen to this. This is King Straggler's uh, Good Man. It's time let a good man love you. <laughs> this isn't my song. What? No. <laughs> Seems like no. 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 Wait a minute. Uh, uh, not your song? No, I've never heard that song in my life. My song's a lot better than that song. Apologies to whoever that is, but uh, I thought uh, that my sweetheart might have MP3'd it to you. Uh, someone was to have, but uh, no, I've never heard that song in my life. Oh my God! I'm sorry about that. Oh, what a shame. Well, rent the movie Amateurs and stay to you know, and go to the credits to listen to it. Wow, but, uh, that's embarrassing. Yeah, okay. well, King, Kingstraggler dot net, I believe it is, and uh, and uh, you know there's, uh, there's 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 pieces of songs there. That song's probably there. You could probably cue it up and play it. I, I don't think you can burn it, but but you can listen to it. But anyway. I my goodness. Uh, yeah, okay, well we that's awkward. Well, yeah, a little I, bit, a little awkward. A little <laughs> awkward. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm 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 glad you're, you 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 uh, let folks know that I I just. I uploaded the song I was sent. <laughs> oh, I'm uh, so sorry about that. Wow, that's weird. That's okay. I have no idea who well, that was to find well, out. Well, here's what we'll do. We'll get you back another time. All right. We'll play that. Fair enough. Um, well, that, that's, that's yep. disappointing, but that's all right. We, we, it happens. It's, again, that's show business, folks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's stuff, stuff happens, right? It's, it's so funny because I, I heard you start to talk um, over it, and I thought, is that, I don't remember hearing that as part of the song. What, 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 what? And then I realized, oh, oh you're saying well, it's not my song. The greatest thing was that we, that we didn't get through the whole song. And then after we <laughs> my song, at least we stopped far away. That's good. Apologies well, yeah, to whoever, whoever the other uh, song that has the words good man in it. But, uh, you know, if this was... Uh, Fragler's good man, not, not my good man. If this was broadcast radio, uh, you know, we both would have probably put down, you would have put down the phone, I would have put down the headset, gone down the hallway... 
had yeah. a had a had a soda or, or yeah. whatever, and uh, come back, and then you'd be like, uh, well, uh, yeah, that was my song. That was about my, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so strange. Well, it was so, it, how, yeah. I'll, I'll get to the bottom of it. Heads will roll, Bob. Heads will roll. <laughs> <laughs> how long have you been making music? Uh, well, you know, I, I picked up the guitar in the sixth grade because my older brother uh, played guitar, and I just kind of he's nine years my elder, and I just I just always wanted to be like him. Uh, he's such a terrific guy, still is, and uh, so I just as a as a you know I don't know how old I was, eleven year old, uh, and he was uh, you know twenty playing guitar. I was uh, I was just wanted to be like him, so I think he might have been gone. I picked up his guitar and started playing a little bit, and. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I taught myself in sixth grade, and I never improved. Basically, is my old joke. But uh, <laughs> but uh, he, uh, my folks, uh, we weren't dirt poor or anything like that. But we weren't uh, real rich people. And uh, a, a, my wanting a guitar uh, was was uh, wanting my own guitar because he went off to college was uh, you know a, a bit of a problem. And so my mother and father were, were were actually about about to split up and that was probably you know a money issue too but the, but right around that time but they they said well if you can if you can learn to play the ukulele that's in the den uh you know we'll get you a guitar and they probably didn't realize there was a there was a little book laying underneath the ukulele which they hadn't probably picked up in years that said how to play ukulele in 5 minutes <laughs> 5 minutes later i was going michael rose about a shore <laughs> you know and so so uh, you know, about a year later, we went to uh, we went to to uh, some folks uh, nearby out in the country where I lived, and they sold us a harmony guitar for I think uh, twenty bucks, and uh, <laughs> I had that guitar all the way uh, into into Texas, and even played with it a little in, in early bands, and then gave it away to a guy on the street who I'd met who uh, needed a guitar when I got a new one, and, and uh, several guitars ago now, but the uh, the first one's always a special one to you, but. Uh, so I guess I've been playing a long time. I started playing in bands in the in the in early to mid '80s in in Austin, Texas, uh, and uh, have not continually been in bands since. But have, have kind of you know maintained interest. And maybe I don't know seven or eight years ago, eight nine years ago here in LA, started playing solo shows and met some people through that. And eventually, uh, Rodney Eastman and Brentley Gore and myself. Uh, made King Straggler, and that was over six years ago. We've been not playing a lot lately because we're busy and uh, doing other things. Those guys are actors as well. And uh, and so we've gotten to tour around and, like you said, play South by Southwest and Sundance. And uh, But uh, lately it's been going a little slower. I've been playing alone a lot because, uh, you know, I know... I know that uh, I can book a show, and I know I know everybody will be there. <laughs> it's a it's a time when uh, when we're all just a little a little split uh, split up, but we're we're looking forward to getting together and, and playing some more soon. So playing some shows. Yeah. And such. There are uh, a number of actors fronting bands these days. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin Bacon and his brother uh, yeah, Hugh Laurie. Yeah, yeah. Right, uh, Hugh Laurie and uh, and the guy who plays Mike the Handyman. Now I'm thinking yeah. actually you and he should get together since you yeah, both. Maybe. Oh. You owned you owned a hardware store in your show, and he plays a handyman. So exactly, should... no, we didn't. Yeah, because but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> the hammerheads. I don't know what we'd be, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of actor bands, and and I understand. You know, the funny thing is, Bob is, is uh, and I I do understand it myself uh, as a knee jerk reaction to an actor making music. You know, to, it's a given. <laughs> uh, you know, how big does your ego have to be? That kind of thing. But you know, for. Myself and the other two actors in the band, we were all playing music before we ever were were acting, and uh, it's the kind of thing where if it helps people come in the door, even if they're going to come in arms folded and skeptical or whatever, we just we just want them to come. So uh, if that helps get people to come out, even if they're ready to throw vegetables, uh, we we usually can win them over pretty quick, and uh, it ends up going from these guys aren't bad for an actor band to these guys are not bad; they're pretty damn good. So so uh, you know. Uh, Again, I have the same kind of reaction. But the funny thing is, is if a if a, if a musician wants to be an actor, everyone thinks that's really cool. But if an actor wants to be a musician, you know, uh, you might as well say that you enjoy, uh, you know, uh, stabbing puppies in the eye. I don't know. It's it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's, it's a strange uh, reaction. But I, but I understand because I have it myself in a, in a strange way. Oh, you're an actor and you're in a band. Wow. Well, you know, Keanu Reeves kind of ruined it for the rest of you guys with dog stuff. <laughs> He's a good guy and a decent bass player, actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know it was just the idea of, you know, I, I think I think I think people were more turned off by the idea of Keanu Reeves actually playing as opposed to like Bill and Ted. Yeah. Um, now, so I got to ask you though, uh, 
Bacon's band and Laurie's band and even even let's say Keanu oh, Reeves band. Oh, there's Julia Lewis and there's Bill Bob Thornton oh, yeah. and yeah, there's a lot lot of actor bands going around. Could, Scott, that's Scott right. Johansson sung some Tom Waits covers and yeah, yeah. So there's a lot. Going actually, on. one of the earliest guests on the show was actually Billy Bob Thornton talking oh, yeah. about the uh, Fox Masters. Yep. Yeah. Um, but what I want to know is, could your band kick their band's asses in a battle of the bands? Well, that I do not know, Bob. And uh, I mean, I. I uh, I was raised right. I'm a Midwestern guy, and I, I don't really, I can't really, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'm not going to throw down the gauntlet on that one. I, I, I can't go there. But uh, who knows? Who knows? Uh, you know, uh, get, let's get some judges and uh, throw, throw us in the arena and see what happens. I'm, I'm up for it. We'll take all comers, I guess, basically. Well, but I got to say, okay, I was going to say, I think what you need is Ian McShane to answer that question for you. That would be nice. <laughs> Bring on all them cocksuckers. I'll take care of them. That's right. Um, <laughs> so, which brings us to this. You're hosting Acme's comedy, Acme Comedy Theater's Acme Saturday Night this Saturday, July That's 11th. True. That's true. Uh, what do you and the writers have planned? Well, What are you going to do? Uh, we just now, before I call, literally uh, just finished shooting. Uh, so they they actually do uh, a lot of uh, or a fair amount of of, uh, of little films, little little little, little films that uh, kind of play uh, in between some of the sketches, and they're they're funny. They're very funny. We we shot a couple today that I don't want to give away too much, but uh, uh, in one I play myself, and in, a, in another one I play a, 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 a wizened old geezer who's talking about a. Uh, um, time life books uh old west bullshit or something they, they, they funny <laughs> stuff and then uh the sketches uh get to play a priest uh, a doctor uh like a teenage uh, uh, snotty kid uh um I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a musician that'll be a stretch and uh <laughs> gosh one other I can't remember what it was oh uh I don't remember but yeah I I, I <laughs> it's like the scripts are just coming I got to memorize them and uh you know, I come out of theater, but it's been a long time, and that, it's like a muscle uh, that uh, you get used to kind of doing a real naturalistic, uh, a really naturalistic kind of uh, film uh, uh, technique, I guess you'd say. I don't really have a technique, but but uh, or method, and then uh, and then and you suddenly you're thrust uh, back on stage. It's, it's been a long time, but this is uh, something that I came up doing. I was doing theater for ten years before I ever uh, you know got in front of a camera and my. My, profession, my earliest professional jobs were uh, as a theater actor uh, doing a play called Greater Tuna and uh, touring that one around the country. So uh, it'll be fun to get back into that. And uh, I've always felt like I can play characters. There's not a great deal of time to uh, really rehearse. Uh, we all show up Saturday and uh, get them on their feet. And, and by Saturday night, there's an audience in, and, and uh, hopefully we're kicking some ass. We'll see. Will there be any kind of uh, Deadwood parody? Certainly. Yes, indeed. That's the other character. That's, isn't that funny? That's the one I forgot. What else? Oh, yeah, there's so <laughs> There's a Deadwood parody uh, dealing with, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but dealing with, uh, with uh, a guy coming in uh, to the bank uh, and wanting a loan for an exotic uh, pet shop. And Saul's angle is, uh, you know, to eat? <laughs> no, 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 to keep us pets. Why the hell would you? That kind of thing. It goes on and on from there. Pretty great. Pretty funny. Uh, hey, you know, I got to I got to tell you that I <laughs> um, can you uh, do you have a couple more minutes? Yeah, yeah, sure. Because um, your uh, your girlfriend yes. just sent me uh, your song. Oh, fantastic! And, and if if we can if we can talk for a minute or two, uh, and I can. Uh, oh yeah, don't worry about it. I no. Can, I can upload it. I have the the best girlfriend in the world. I was just an amazing woman, and uh, I wasn't even sure she was listening. But that's that's terrific. Thank you, sweetheart, if you're listening. Uh, I'm gonna uh, let's see if I can. Uh, I'm a lucky uh, man. That's right. Open it. Let's see what and, happens. Uh, so, you want a drum? You want a drum roll? I don't really. Play no, it'll it'll Let's take a minute. We'll have to we'll have to keep the conversation right, we'll going. We'll get it. See but, um, where are you from, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm from. Uh, I'm down here in St. Petersburg. The, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Now the twins, so, uh, my, my beloved Minnesota twins. They're I'm trying to remember where they they're, they're down there somewhere. Uh, I thought St. Petersburg, but maybe not. I can't remember. Where uh, you know, they might be here tomorrow. Uh, the Rays just uh, took a series from uh, from Toronto. Oh, they so, well, I'm talking about the spring training, Bob. Uh, I'm trying to remember oh, where, they, where they are. Winter Haven, I think. Winter Haven. Is that anywhere near you or not? Or, no, you know where they are? They're down in uh, Fort Myers. That's right. I think Winter Haven many years ago and moved to Fort Myers. That's right. That's right. 
I think that is true. Um, Always so, good to talk baseball. Yeah, congrats on the on the Rays, and uh, you know they had a, had a real great season last year. I'm uh, sad to see them uh, you know lose lose the, the big one, but that's a pretty amazing turnaround. Uh, oh, I think it was yeah, yeah I, again this year. That's great. A- absolutely. Um, but let's let's come back and talk some more about you while I I upload this and and see what we can do I here. Just, um, I was just vamping. I know. I know. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, let's see. Good man. Uh, M four A. Okay, let's let's get this work. So uh, I saw that you have a lot of stuff coming up. Um, yeah. Uh, and and did I see that a Donnie Darko movie was part of the group? Yeah, there was there was a sequel. Uh, I've not seen it uh, called S Darko. Uh, that uh, you know wasn't made with the original creators. It had a lot of detractors among fans. I think uh, I, I've not seen it. Uh, I hope it's good. It was fun to work on, and uh, you know the people were nice. And uh, who knows, uh, you know how that one turned out. I think it's on DVD, but I'm not sure. Not sure. It kind of came came quick. So uh, it's yeah. coming back. Realize yeah, that. Yeah, I okay. believe so. I believe so. I kind of was busy for a couple of months and wasn't sure what was was going on with things, but uh, yeah, I think that one is kind of uh, you, you, you can see it if, if you want to. I, I know that it had uh, some, some some detractors, but I think a lot of people were out to kind of get it before they even saw it, and, and uh, I'm not sure who knew who you know how, how that one came out. I don't I don't have a, a huge role. I, if I had a, a much bigger part, I probably would know more about it and be more attuned to uh, to what it's doing and what it did, but. And what else do you have coming up? Well, I did a, a film called Winter's Bone, uh, based on a, a really great novel, uh, uh, Daniel Woodrell book, and uh, that uh, shot in in uh, the Ozarks uh, of uh, Southern Missouri uh, in uh, this past uh, winter. That was really an interesting project, and I've got a great part, and uh, the people were again amazing. You know, I, I guess you, hopefully you get what you ask for in this world. I just I haven't had too many uh, problems with with people over all the all these years I've been doing it. So, uh, that, but that project was was uh, exceptionally uh, uh, difficult and interesting and and, and fun as a you know, really rough story. Uh, but but I think uh, ultimately something really good. I'm not sure where that one's standing at this point. But uh, and about to go do a film uh, that David Lynch is is producing. Uh, uh, a guy named uh, David Rosenthal is right writing and directing called Janie. Janie Jones that shoots in Iowa in about a month, I think. So playing a bass player, that'll be fun. An instrument I'm not really great on, but uh, I'll be learning. So I played a drummer Do in a you... movie once, too. I had to lie and say the uh, slipping down life. Uh, Guy, Guy Pierce and Lily Taylor I told the producers that I've played drums really well, and then I got the part and had to find a drum teacher and, and learn really quickly, but it all worked out good. Um, would you want to do? I mean, since you you kind of left things sounding open ended on uh, Eastbound and Down, would you mm-hmm. want to do uh, another um, uh, another series? Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as it was something that uh, that was good. I mean, uh, for one thing, uh, you know, the, there's money there. I'm, I'm not a big movie star. I'm not going to command a, a huge box office, and I. Uh, you know, want to be able to take care of my family. I don't have children, but, you know, my mother and father, and, and uh, you know, they do well on their own, but I kind of want them to make sure that everybody's uh, good. I kind of, I guess I kind of want to to, uh, to to get, you know, keep money in the bank, and, and that's one really one really great way to do it. And, and if the series is, is really good, then it's not like working at all. It's like it's like having a lot of enjoyment, and the check shows up uh, every once in a while. And so that's... That's a good thing. Yeah, if it was if it was good writing, I guess that's always what it is. Bob, is the is, 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 is the writing good? Uh, is the is the story interesting? Is the character somebody that you'd want to uh, be for potentially years? You just you just never know. So yeah, but I'd, I'm wide open to it. Sorry, you, I was. Are you working, are you working feverishly? <laughs> I am. I, I uh, it, it it wasn't a, <laughs> just the behind the scenes stuff. It, it did not come over as an MP3, so I had to. Uh, translate it, so I'm uh, uploading it right this second. Well, here's so, a, yeah, here's an just... interesting fact about me, Bob. That the may uh, you may Please. think a little less of me, but uh, I, I, the last time I was on a computer was in 1976 uh, when you when they had teletype paper on them, and I was uh, in high school. And I haven't 
I haven't been on one since. I wouldn't know how to turn it on even. Uh, and, and that it's true. And, uh, you know, it kind of goes uh, in stages where people think that's either really quaint or really creepy. And it's hard to, you know, it kind of goes back and forth to, uh, I think some people, depending on their day, if they were tired of being on the computer, they go, you know what? That's really kind of cool. I wish I didn't ever have one of these things. And other people are like, are you a freak? What is wrong with you? Are you on your head? <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of, I just kind of, you know, lived my life before they showed up and just kind of continued to live and never never got into it and it's getting harder and harder to live without one but uh it's not like I'm some kind of super luddite I'm you know I have a telephone and a car and electricity in my house <laughs> running water but I never uh never uh got too into the giggle box uh, I guess uh, I spend so much time at home already kind of you know uh, yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of would rather get out and 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 you know see people or read books or things like that. So, so that's that. you know, it's, fun, it's funny. I I actually make my living writing books with uh, CEOs, mm-hmm. and uh, I thought that that was going to be the last group on earth that would uh, handle their own computers and stuff. Mm-hmm. And and uh, I think that was close. But I'm actually finding that. Uh, I don't think you're the only one uh, oh, in good, your profession. Good. I'm not the last. Uh, good. No, no, not by a long shot. Um, no, I feel like Billy Bob or somebody else isn't isn't, isn't real involved. And I can't remember. There's some other actor that I really admired. Someone mentioned to me. It was Billy. Cr- I can't remember. I don't want to say names because I don't know for sure. But yeah, yeah. I guess uh, now it's. I don't know. It's. Uh, it just feels like it's too late for me. <laughs> I don't much <laughs> care anymore. And it's kind of I'm almost like a like a guinea pig test to see how long a human being can uh, survive on the on the planet without one. But I don't I don't feel like I'm missing too much. Uh, there's encyclopedias and you know there's lots of ways to find things and telephones if you want to talk to people or letters if you want to communicate that way. But yeah, it's odd. But uh, I guess I'm beginning to feel more and more like a relic or a dinosaur. But uh, I'm I'm holding holding tight to the dream. I'm still living the dream without the computer. <laughs> see what happens. It's- are there are there uh, are there any gigs upcoming for uh, King Straggler? No, nothing on the books. I'm playing uh, Tuesday at ten o'clock at a place called Cranes on El Centro. That's a little plug in uh, Hollywood, and uh, that's not King Straggler song. Just just uh, stuff that doesn't really work so well with the group that I still want uh, to want to play. So so that's happening. And uh, no, we don't really have one one set. We played. Probably a month ago or something, somewhere roughly. And uh, but again, I've been in and out of town as as have they. There's no real rancor or anything. We just kind of uh, uh, you know take breaks, and we happen to be on one. Do you? Uh, and I'm 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 just waiting for this thing to finish uh, yeah. processing. Do Do you? Uh, I mean, do you play much cover material? It sounds like it's a very kind of a bluesy, uh, not, uh, like bluegrass almost. Blues. I suppose I don't think there's much real bluegrass in it at all. You know, the three of us uh, okay. come come from. Uh, it's three front men who all write and sing, so we all come from uh, different backgrounds and styles, and I guess it's kind of a melding of those. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know a, a part. Uh, a, a, I guess uh, as the old press release said, uh, part tattered folk, uh, part uh, noisy rock, and part tear it up country. Just kind of a little of everything. But you know, uh, we're not young young men, or I can certainly speak for myself. We don't really love wearing earplugs. We've all been in, in loud bands before, but we've uh, this band isn't isn't one of those. It, get, it gets loud where it where it needs to, but for the most part, it's uh, um, a little quieter, but uh, still has some some teeth and some some guts and some humor and and. Uh, mm. So it's uh it's an interesting mix for sure. But yeah, we play a few covers. I guess you know, I guess the one place that we'd all intersect is is that we one artist that we'd all uh, like would be would be Neil Young. But uh mm-hmm. we don't sound like that or, or we do cover his song Harvest and we've done covers of everything from Prince to the uh, the Cure to I mean, you know, kind of new wavy stuff all the way to Elvis Presley to uh Little Feet to you know, just lots of lots of different bands, so well, I have your song at my fingertips now, and just to God remind the right one, Bob. Yeah, me too. This is uh, King Straggler, and uh, this is Good Man, which you said is uh, sort of about your dad. Yeah, a little bit. All right, let's uh, <laughs> cross your fingers. Here we go.
Mr. Wall's a good man Don't stay down when he falls Haunted by my youth Suffocated truth Piece of me has to die Before I find the strength to fly Nice, and I trust that was the correct song. That that wasn't our song either, Bob. No, I'm kidding. That, that is, that is, that is <laughs> I liked it so much, I just wanted to let it go. I have no idea who that was. No, that was that was us. that was ours. Well, yeah, you know, we recorded that stuff, uh, that that first record, uh, and we got a couple more ready to go. We're just uh, shopping a little bit and trying to figure out how to how to approach it. You know, the CD is dead. I'm kind of the last one to have learned that. The stores don't really take them. People don't much buy them anymore. But but maybe we'll just put it all out online. But we got a lot more to go. But that was that was uh, maybe six months after we started playing. That was uh, recorded in I think oh four oh oh four. Yeah. Uh, hmm. But it's good to hear again. That's nice. Would it be wrong to call it uh, a little bit funny and a little bit sweet? I think I don't think that would be that would be uh, that would be wrong at all. All right. <laughs> like me. <laughs> well, well, there you go. There you go. There you go. Well, our thanks to uh, Tisha and. Uh, yes. Thanks, Tisha. That was very nice of her to uh, jump in and, and uh, do that. Uh, not a problem. Hey, look, we got to we got to hang on to you a little longer than planned. And oh, thanks. So uh, let me tell everybody uh, first of all that you can uh, catch uh, John Hawks live in uh, Los Angeles on Saturday, July 11th, when he hosts uh, Acme Comedy Theater's Acme Saturday Night. Uh, you can order tickets online at www.acmecomedy.com, or if you can't make it to the show. Watch it live online at www.acmecomedy.tv. Now, you can also order King Straggler's self-titled CD, which I believe has Good Man on it, right? It does, yes, indeed. Uh, you can order that at cdbaby.com, among other places. And you can support the band on MySpace or on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, John, uh, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a oh, nothing, it was never a dull moment here. Oh, it was really great. I uh, Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, my it. pleasure. Thanks My for, pleasure. for Thanks. Uh, hyping the Acme show. These are good people over here, and I hope we get a crowd. I think we should. I'm sure you will. And uh, thanks so much for being with us on Mr. Media. Good to talk to you. And you. Take care. All right. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And folks, for uh, more interviews with uh, HBO stars, you can surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. That's mrmedia.com. It's where you can listen to my earlier conversations with uh, Anna Gunn, also of Deadwood, uh, Jeff Garland of Curb Your Enthusiasm, and many more. And please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites, whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, True Slant, Digital Journal, Vox, Podcast Pickle, Mediafly, Podfeed.net, Blueberry, Zencast, Zimbio, or Odeo. And subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. Or subscribe to Mr. Media's blog on the Amazon Kindle Reader. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. That's A-N-D-E-L-M-A-N. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. Always appreciate when you give us a piece of your day. And thanks for listening. Bye, everybody. <laughs>